Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be finishing up my tutorial on HTML and CSS. The first half of the video, we created a really plain web page, looked like this. The point of the video was to create a three column floating layout. So think of this as a column, this is a column, this is a column. In this video, uh, we've already got the floating layout, and basically what I'm going to teach you how to do is put some style to this page. So if you're interested in making this page look like this page, then you're watching the right video. So you notice I'm not going to change the content at all. I'm just going to add some style to it. So I'm going to add some color. And most notably, the big outcome from this is going to be we're going to make our unordered list, this plain guy over here, look like this right here. So if you're interested, you're in the right spot. If you just want to finish up our last video, you're also in the right spot. So I am going to open up the file we left off with last time so if you want to know what we did and how we got to this point you should watch the first video so I am going to start here as I said we're not going to create any new content so my body's down here and it's going to stay down here uh, we're going to be working within the head we're going to be adding to the style of this document as it stands we've got a float right and we've got a float left and that's how we got things aligned to the left and the right I'm not actually going to mess around with my float right very much. Uh, that's just where my picture's sitting. Our menu is actually on the left, and we're, so we're going to be adding to that float left style. So, I am. I like that it's floating to the left. Uh, margin of two M's. We'll work with that, but I want to add a bunch more things to this float left style. So this is the general container for my left style. Um, basically, what I want to do is remove some of that some of that space. So I'm going to go margin top and we're going to set that to zero. All right, so that's going to get rid of this space sitting right there. And the other thing I want to do, which isn't going to show up at this point, but you're probably going to take my word on it, since this is a nav bar and I do want it to take up the uh, entire page from top to bottom, I'm going to set that at a relative width of 100%. And the other thing I'm going to do, just because I kind of like the way this looks and what I did in my example, is I gave this column, if you will, an absolute well, a relative width, but I gave it 10 EM. So I'm going to save this, Control S, and I'm going to refresh my page. And nothing happened, really. I mean, it was it's kind of tricky what happened. It slid up because I got rid of that top margin, and I gave it a fixed width. <clears throat> other I could have made a host of decisions but those are the ones I made so now what I'm gonna do right I've got a class here and I'm applying my class down here to the list I want to apply some more effects to the items that are contained within that class so the first one that I want to mess around with it's gonna be dot float left so we're accessing that class again and I wanted to find the list items within that class so I open and close my curly braces right there. And here's where most of the magic happens. Right? You wouldn't necessarily think that you can make this look like this through this part, uh, through manipulating the list items, but that is pretty much what we're going to do. So for these list items, I'm going to say I want them to have a background color of navy. Sorry, still new to the tutorials, typing and talking is kind of hard for me. So background color. So that's where our background color is going to come from. Now the interesting thing is that black line on the right side of the, they look like buttons. That is actually a border and it's a right border. So border right. And I want to say solid. And I'm going to make it black. And I'm going to say it's 2 EM wide. All right, so that's kind of a little shorthand going on here. I'm saying I want a solid border. I want that border to be black. I want it to be 2 EM wide. This is probably a good time to save and view our page so you can see what's happening. And you can see the general shape already. Sure, it looks terrible. The text is unreadable. There's nothing separating the buttons, and I've got these dots out here. But that's nothing we can't fix pretty easily. So let's get rid of the dots, all right? Because it started off as a list, but really it's a nav bar. So let's get rid of those. So this is list style type. And our type and none. So you're just going to, I'm not going to preview it. Just take my word for it that that's going to get rid of our bullets. 
Uh, actually, sure, let's preview it, because the rest of this is just purely stylistic, and you can see that now our, our bullets are gone. Now, when I mean stylistic, I mean I want there to be space between my buttons, because it just looks like this weird block, and it is a weird block right now. So probably, I think what I want to happen is how about a margin below each button. So below each one of these list items, there's going to be some space. So that's margin, bottom, and let's do one EM. And let's see what that looks like. Save, refresh. Now we're taking shape. Now the weird thing about this, it should be sticking out to you, it's sticking out to me right now, is that these buttons are just too thin. So margin gave me padding outside of the list items. Basically I want padding inside of the items so I can achieve that with the padding attribute. And so uh, let's say I want, let's just put padding everywhere, I guess, of, of one EM. And let's see what that looks like. It's going to look a little bit goofy, um, but that's better, right? Probably a better idea is maybe a half. And I think what we're actually going to find with this list, because we're trying to do a decent job with it, is that we probably don't want uniform padding everywhere. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bite the bullet and we'll get into this. Let's say padding top is 0.5 em so we'll go fractional and we'll do the same thing for padding bottom 0.5 em and let's see what we've got sorry i know i'm previewing a lot but i don't just have this all memorized and so the thing this looks pretty good and this looks a lot like our destination but the problem is that I, I would like, I don't really think this looks very good just having my text glued against the side. Um, if you're just watching a YouTube video and you're not doing this, you might not even be able to see my text. But I want a little space between the edge. So space, that sounds like padding left. So padding left, and there's no reason why that couldn't be a full EM, I don't think. So I save that, and I preview. And now it's starting to take some shape. I like this. So let's move forward. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I need to make this text readable, right? And the kind of tricky thing about this, I guess it's tricky, is if you go and look at the body of our document, those are links. That's why they're blue, and that's why it's blue on blue, and that's why it looks bad. Because by default, a link is blue. I want to change that my uh, I want to change my links. So I want to change the links that are part of my float left class. So I'm going to float left, space, and A, right? So anchor tag is essentially what we are defining. And I'm not going to get too creative. Most of the heavy lifting was in here. And really, all I want is the color of my links to be white. That's pretty much all I need. And I'll show you what this does. And it's pretty much going to do what we want. This is good. But do things need to be underlined, right? When you think of a link, you think of it as in line with your text. But uh, let's get rid of that underline. And so the rest, best way to do that is text decoration. And I want none. And that's going to get rid of under underlines. That's a pretty common thing to do. Now we're taking shape. All right, the only, this looks good, and this pretty much looks like my example. You might even like this layout better than that one that I have sitting on this tab right here. But I want to make these buttons change color when I mouse over them. All right, so the idea that it's not real clear that these are links, but if I want to make that idea a little more clear, well, let's keep working with this class. So float left, and I wanted to find the link, but links have states like hover. Uh, they have states like visited and active, but I'm just going to mess around with uh, hover. So the idea of once you hover over the link, it's going to change colors, and I'm going to say that color is orange. And there's my first bad typo. So orange. I'm going to save this. I'm going to give this a view. And now you notice when you mouse over, they turn orange, right? Which really indicates that, hey, that's a link. This is pretty good. So if you're going to compare this and this, my list is similar. The only difference is, and it is a little bit goofy that my buttons are hanging out over here. If you wanted to actually align them with the edge of the page, which isn't a deal breaker in any case, that looks like a margin, right? So I just have to figure out where's that margin coming from, which is not as easy as it sounds like. 
So I'm thinking that that margin is coming from the float left style itself. And so if I look at this, I've got a right margin of 2EM. That's fine. How about a margin left of zero? Let's see if that takes care of our problem. And I refresh, and of course that didn't do it. So where is that coming from? Is that padding? It was the padding attribute. So uh, that, that makes sense because we have list items sitting here and they're contained within a container called float left. And so that, that float left had uh, some padding in it. So now, now we're looking like that. And so basically we've, that's the navigation bar and that's probably why you're watching the video. But let's just uh, do the rest of the page and see what I did. So nothing too fancy going on. I just changed the background color all right, so I just redefined the body tag. So these are all classes. I'm going to go down here, and I haven't done this yet. I'm just going to write body, right? It's not a class. It's not an ID. I'm just saying, hey, everywhere there's a body tag, and of course there's only one, I want the background color to be, what is the hex value of what I did? Uh, 807 uh, F. Zero, zero. That's what I went with. I just looked up some nice colors and I came up with that one. So I save this, refresh, and that didn't work because I spelled background wrong. So there's that color, right? We're almost there. And the only other difference, I did some layout things. I had slightly different padding going on, but you, why would you try and copy me exactly? You're making your own document. I do want to change my headings. And if you remember, looking at our source code here, I have an H1 and an H2, so I want to redefine H1 and H2, and I'm going to show you how you can do that just in one big shot here. So H1, comma, H2, so I'm saying I want to make some changes to both of those tags. I changed the color to pound sign 8 with five zeros. I did that, and I also centered it, all right? And so center is text align center. And if I save and refresh, that's pretty much what I did. So you notice we didn't add any content to our document, but through the use of some CSS, we made our our, our, our document into something presentable. And, and you know, this isn't the most interesting document, but from this point, it's just about adding some, some interesting content. This layout is, it is what it is. This is a pretty nice little nav bar over here. We've even got some, some hover events. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to make another video, depending on how much this one gets watched, about making a horizontal nav bar, which is also common. Thank you for watching.